Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Here at the Universal Center for Renovation channel, we wanted to talk more about the role that the southern kingdom of Judah played in the history of the Roman Empire and European medieval history. Developing news has forced us to put that on pause and go back to the basic premise that the victims of the transatlantic slave trade originally lived in the Near East, particularly Israel, and they migrated into West Africa. The geographical chart map of the 12 tribes is being studied and its detractors are trying to use it as a weak point and dismantling the whole edifice concerning the Hebrew slash Israel slash Jews identity of the victims of the transatlantic slave trade. The skeptics are arguing that 1882 or 1892 or somewhere about that time, the former enslaved formulated a plan to assume the identity of the biblical nation of Israel to escape their true identity as blacks, Negro, or African. An identity that gave them a subservient role in the eyes of the world, or at least in the Americas. The war isn't against the 12 tribe geographical ethnic map. It's against the very notion that the former enslaved are actually descendants of the tribes of Israel. It's looked at as heretical and subversive to societal norms to question history. And that where the problem starts. History or historical information actually agrees with the 12 tribe geographical chart ethnic map in the notion that the transatlantic enslaved were the children of the historical Israelites. So let's backtrack a little and go back to the beginning and prove. And it's easy if you know the history of events surrounding the transatlantic slave trade that indeed the enslaved were self-identifying as Israel slash Jews slash Hebrews. This does not in any way dismantle anyone else's self-identification as Jews. It's only to reaffirm that the enslaved and the indigenous in the Americas were indeed the children of God. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans chapter 18 verse 16. The Judeans. The parable of the good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. This is about who is your neighbor and who is your countryman. Dera Europus Synagogue. 
there was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The Black Presence in the Lands of the Bible, page 15. The Exodus, Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egyptian slavery. In 1991, F. James Davis published a fascinating book titled, Who is Black? One Nation's Definition. Davis shows that the one drop rule, according to which anyone with a single drop of black blood in his slash her veins is to be regarded as black did not become widely accepted in the United States until the later part of the 19th century. For a long time, many states used other rules. Some states even validated a class of the United States courts has the sole legal authority to define who is black who is not within its borders. For a long time, many states used other rules. Some states even validated a class of mulattoes to serve as a buffer between whites and blacks. In the end, however, the one drop rule triumphed not only among whites who had created it, but also among blacks, many of whom had initially opposed it. Thus, in the United States, there are no mulattoes. The color line permits only two possibilities, white and black. By curious coincidence, rabbinic law, which does not subscribe to a one-drop rule also does not permit mulattoes. A person is either a Jew or a non-Jew. There are no half-Jews. In reality, there are no such things as black Jews, white Jews, Asian Jews, African Jews, Indian Jews, etc. Only Jews and non Jews. Persons who by ancestry are more white than black, who look more white than black, whose social connections are more white than black whose manner of speech is more white than black, can or must nonetheless see themselves as black and even be seen by others, both white and black, as black. Citizens of other countries which do not have the one-drop rule are thoroughly puzzled by a system that insists on the blackness of people who do not look black at all, and who, if they lived outside the United States, would not be considered black. Black is a confusing category to determine somebody ancient biblical ethnic ancestry and modern ancestry as well. Black implies someone has a dark complexion 
and could apply to almost anyone. You could be a black Native American, black Cuban, black Brazilian. Black doesn't let you understand where somebody's ancestors come from, what language they spoke. Moses, brother Aaron, first high priest of the nation of Israel. As the population of the United States continue to become more diverse, as more and more browns enter the population alongside blacks and whites, and as genetic mixing among all these groups continues to increase, more and more people will question whether a single drop of black blood necessarily makes a person black. People who are classified as black are trying to look beyond the legal term black and are trying to take a more personal look into who they are as people and taking a more humanized approach to who they are. As they are learning more about their rights, duties, and responsibilities as citizens of the country, countries they live in, self-identification and understanding who you are and your place in the scheme of things is reasonably natural. In a New York Times story titled Black Identity in the 90s, members of the black community wondered aloud whether blackness is a function of skin color, ancestry, culture, class, politics, or some combination of these. Even the federal government, according to another New York Times story, is beginning to rethink a system of racial classification. Perhaps it will institute a multi-racial category and yet other categories for people who are dark skinned but not black. Who then is black and no less important, who has the power to decide? The forced categorization of people seem to be more harmful than good, considering the historical fact of miscegenation that has been taking place in the Western Hemisphere for the past 500 years. It's time to take an honest look at who we are. Once upon a time, we knew who was a Jew, who was a black, what was a red wolf, and what was a rodent. Now, we are not so sure. It is not just Jews, then, who wonder about their identity and their proper taxonomic classification. Until geneticists discovered the long, elusive Jewish gene. Jewishness will remain a social construction, a variable, not a constant. In this book, I hope to illuminate the beginning of Jewishness, the beginning of Jewishness, Shay Cohen. Geneticists cannot tell us who we are. There is no such thing as a Jewish gene. That means we have to research. If we are blessed, then divine inspiration 
may lead us to come across material that points us in the right directions. If we offend anyone in our search for who we were, it's not intentional. We were lost. But with aid of the inspired book, the Bible, and secular literature, we believe we found what we were looking for. Redemption. And this is the question we find ourselves asking more frequently these days. Who was a Jew? Here are two maps or geographical maps or charts. On the left, we have the 12 tribes of Israel around 1200 to 1050 BC, according to the book of Joshua. On this geographical ethnic map, the location of all 12 tribes are located on this map. To the right, we have another geographical ethnic map or chart. This one takes place around 70 AD. Around the time period of 70 AD, the Roman Empire, only three tribes are left in the land. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. We are still left with a serious puzzle. The meaning of the word Jew itself. The predecessors of the English word Jew, Greek, Iodeus, and Latin, Iodeus, were originally ethnic geographic terms like Egyptian, Syrian, Cappadocian, Thracian, and so forth. Thus, instead of Jews, we should, in many cases, speak rather of Judeans, the residents of Judea, geography, who constitute the ethnos, nation, or people of the Judeans, ethnicity. Similarly, Egyptians are those who reside in Egypt and constitute the nation or people of the Egyptians. Judea is a geographical location. Judean is a ethnos, a nation, a people.